Hey everybody, welcome to this month's Best in Beauty video. I have some fabulous things to share with you, things that I have been using tons, so excited about, some really different kind of off the beaten path items, as well as perhaps if you've buzzed about things here and there too. But um, thank you so much for joining me for these videos. Sometimes with review videos, I feel like I wanna give this exact info, I wanna make sure I don't leave anything out and it can become very business-like, you know? But these favorites videos are always a lot of fun, as are my um, get ready with me videos. Too. And I'm bringing some old school glamour for you today. I used my hot rollers and just got a ton of volume in my hair from that. I do so love my T3 rollers. I'll link to those below, but they are the best hot rollers I've ever used. And I have learned, by the way, that if I give them an extra long time to heat, like they're a fast heat up thing, you know, they say only like a few minutes. But what I've been finding is if I can turn them on just a little bit earlier and give them like, I don't know, 15 minutes of heat up time, it's an even more amazing long lasting result in my hair. So just a little trick, just something you come up with after you use them time and time again. But just looking over some of the things I have to talk about, I think I'm going to start actually with bronzer. This is something I was thinking about doing just a devoted video to, but I thought, you know, it is one of my monthly favorites, so I just explain it all here for you instead of making you wait. But it's their new Take Home the Bronze bronzers. I think these are absolutely fantastic. The Balm does powder products wonderfully well. I've raved about their blushes, their eyeshadows. Also a specific thing about their blushes that I've loved over the years, and I see it in these too, um, especially their in-stain blushes, but you can like swatch them out on your hand and then rub over them, and these are powders granted. You can rub over them and they practically stain the skin. Like they're very long wearing, and these bronzers have that very same effect. So I love to see great staying power in these products. They do perform really well on the skin, just in real life, not just in little test swatches. But basically what they've done is come out with three tones of bronzer, whereas before with Bahama Mama, they really only had the one. And this is a great bronzer, but some people may have found the tone to be, you know, not exactly perfect for them, or maybe a little dark or a little light. So with Take Home the Bronze, they've got three shades. Now here's what's odd to me. I was just looking at the Balm's website, and they've all been named different things. Like mine, the lightest shade is called Oscar, the middle shade is called Tony, and this one, the darkest, is Gram E. And they're all different now on the Balm's website, so I don't know why they made that change, but I think you'll still easily be able to know what I'm talking about and identify them as like light, medium, and dark, basically. But they are 100% matte bronzers, and I think the lightest shade has been so great for me in terms of contouring. Like, I'm wearing it as a very soft contour today. I do feel like using a bit more targeted brush for that contour works really well. Like, for example, initially when I got the product, I was just using my e.l.f. complexion brush, which, don't get me wrong, this is a great brush for just any kind of all-purpose powder all over the face, but my Sigma Soft Angled Contour Brush, or any maybe a little bit smaller, even more pinched-in type contour brush, really applies this nicely, and you see even more color payoff from it, and it's just such a perfect, slightly cool and not-too-dark shade for hollows of the cheeks, around the hairline. I love this, and it's definitely lighter than Bahama Mama if you ever felt like that was too dark. Now, the middle shade that they've come out with, just to give you a little description here, it's quite a bit warmer. Now these, the claim to fame with these bronzers is the fact that they're calling them Take Home the Bronze and they are anti-orange bronzers, but this one is considerably warmer. I think if you have a little more depth to your skin naturally, if you tend to have a lot of warmth in your skin, this might be a workable shade, but it's warmer than Bahama Mama also, and I'll throw up some swatches too, but I think intensity-wise, depth-wise, these two are kind of on par with one another. This one is just a little warmer, this one's cooler. And then this is your deepest, so let's look at that next to Tony. It's cooler and it's definitely darker. And I kind of stayed away from this one when I first got it because I thought, oh, it's just, it's going to be way too dark for my skin. You got to keep in mind that even though you can do finger swatches of these in a very opaque way, it's a bronzer and you're going to wear it fairly lightly on the skin. And I can wear this one. I actually have this one around my hairline up here right now. I think in the summer months, as my skin gets a little bit deeper, I'm thinking of also doing some self tanning as well. I actually think this color will be extremely versatile this deepest one, because it's all about, you know, just how much you get on the brush, how lightly you apply. It is pigmented, so I think for a much deeper skin tone, it can go there and provide some contrast for you. But if you are more like my skin tone, you can absolutely use this as well. And let's hold it up in comparison to Bahama Mama. I feel like it's a similar undertone, definitely the deepest bronzer offering from the balm. So again, if I were to say my favorites, I really love the lightest, just for everyday wear, easy, soft contour, and then this one to really
really like amp up your skin tone. Use it with a soft hand very lightly. It's extremely versatile, but these apply so smoothly. Great pigmentation, amazing staying power, like I said. So great job to the balm on that. And today it's actually the Oscars, the day I'm sitting here shooting this, so how appropriate is that? Now here's another thing that I truly have been using so much this past month, and anytime I go somewhere I feel like this is something I want to throw into my travel bag. And I mentioned this last month as well, so I thought, does this even qualify as a favorite? And then I thought, yes, it's definitely worth mentioning if you feel like you've used it a lot, regardless of the fact that this was mentioned in last month's favorites too. Frankly, I think that's even more impactful that I value this product that much. But it's from Viseart. It's my Theory palette in Enamored. So this is the face one. And this has gotten some use, everybody. Like, if you look up closely at this palette, I mean, I've been kind of digging down into these shades. I think the blush is gorgeous. It's a beautiful mauve shade. I'm wearing that blush and the highlight as well. The highlight is so brightening. It's got just a tinge of pink to it. Like, you're not gonna really necessarily even swatch it out and think, oh, wow, that's pinky. But it's just a hint that makes it so super brightening. And then I can use this shade as well for a quick contour or bronzer. Honestly, it doesn't have quite the softness of the bronzers from the balm, but I would say it's kind of like a mix between Bahama Mama and their middle color called Tony. It's like if you mix these two, you would get um, the shade that's in this Viseart trio. But it's just so compact, so travel friendly. It's just one of those no-brainer space minimizing. I know it's good quality. I know these shades, you know, that shade of blush can work for absolutely anything. The highlight as well is going to be like everything I need. But guys, here's another fascinating product here. So there's something from Sephora. Let's back it up for the backstory here. Sephora has something called the Perfection Mist Nude Glow. I had gotten this quite some time ago. The shade is universal and it kind of feels like this dry spray. It's actually an aerosol and you can mist it all over your skin and you do develop this sort of undetectable glow. I've mentioned this before in a video if this is sounding familiar, but it's not a real like hydration pack spray like certain setting sprays or refreshing sprays that you've maybe tried. It's kind of like a texture free free glow, if that makes sense. So I was sort of intrigued after I'd tried that and I decided to get one of the blushes. So this is the Perfection Mist Airbrush Blush in Pink of Perfection. You shake this stuff up and I do have a little bit of this as my finishing touch on my skin today. So like I did all my face makeup, I set my look, I think I used that CoverGirl look lockup all over, and then I really like this as the very last step because the finish is so incredibly fresh and subtle, but beautiful guys. And I probably need to demo this in a video or maybe I'll just add a little bit more right now. And you're going to be scared to do it the first time. You're going to be like, what? Like, am I spraying blush on my cheeks? But it's very subtle. You can just feel it. Like, I can exactly feel it coming in contact with that spot on my cheek. I sort of pulse my finger on it a little bit, and I'm not trying to apply too much here because I already did put it on, but if you hold your finger down just a bit more, you'll notice the intensity building up more, but it is so fresh and just completely lightweight. If you're looking for a different take on blush, like, I have loved this so much. And it's sort of just been this, like, absolute end of the look accent type thing. Like, oh, I think I'm done. No, I'm not. I'm just going to pop this on. And it's like the glow is totally game changed by that product. So that's awesome. Talking eyeshadow palettes here, there's been so much eyeshadow palette experimentation over the past month. Thinking back to all the bad habit stuff, we had the new Anastasia palette, which I love, but I haven't necessarily had my hands on that for super long. But I would say a definite favorite shadow palette of the month would be my bad habit after party palette. If you watched my video, you saw my rave about this one and the other little palettes in this style. See, if you want to spend $30 on the Bad Habit app, you can get all four of the different after palettes that are fashioned after different um, Huda Beauty palettes, the Obsessions ones. And this one I love so much because it does have a couple of little pops of warmth with this gold shade and the color called Morning After, but then you have the taupes, the dark browns. It's like perfect smoky eye with a little bit of shimmer. And some of you were saying like, oh no, these are out of stock and I know like I waited for these to come into stock as well before I made my order. So I'm sorry if you've been waiting on this and haven't yet had the opportunity to get it. I am wearing these for my look today. Um, I've got some of the center shade here and this kind of taupey bronze on my lid. I've also got the dark brown and a little bit of the black in my outer corner and this morning after shade right here. Sorry, I'm holding it upside down so I don't blind you with the mirror, but this color right here is a great little like just above the crease shade. I've got some of the black smudge 
edged out on the lower lash line. So it's just a fantastic kind of like warm meets cool, smoky eye natural palette. And the quality, I mean, I raved on this in the Shop Hush video, but it's superb. It's absolutely amazing. Can I though just mention one more thing that's really just swooping in here right at the end of the month? I've used it several times and I'm just like, this is so good. I love this. This is the mint chocolate palette from Makeup Revolution. And they have some different chocolate bar things, and I've gotten a few that I've really yet to dig into, but this one was the one I was most excited about with this color scheme. Now, there are some gorgeous mattes happening here, some mattes that are definitely like things that I love with rich browns, the kind of cranberry color. There's a nice matte dark forest green. You've got shimmery green, shimmery copper, golds, like, this palette is fun as heck to play with, and I've loved the looks I've done with it. I took pictures I know of at least one and was talking about it on Snapchat. I feel like I have so much to talk about from Makeup Revolution. It's just been kind of a culmination of trying different things. I've got concealing and baking and palettes and so much to talk about from this line. And it's not like I haven't done Makeup Revolution videos in the past, but they're coming out with things so quickly that I think an updated video on that brand is definitely warranted right now. You just meet me in the middle. You guys, it's gonna be such a nice day out there today. Like, look outside at the weather window. We've already got blue sky. We've got chirping birds. Spring is coming. Let's talk about some lip products now because I am wearing a freaking cocktail of things on my lips today. I combined several. You wouldn't have to, I mean, but it's hard in these videos because like you want to demonstrate and show all the favorites and I've got like six lip favorites here. So overall lipstick, this little gem, this is another Makeup Revolution thing. This is one of their Life on the Dance Floor, I believe is the name of the special line. One of those lipsticks. It feels like the same formula as their Renaissance lipsticks, I think they were called, the ones in the kind of rose gold tubes. Those were beautifully done, very soft, creamy lipsticks. And so there's a shade in this line called Exclusive and it is the perfect very dusty rose. So that's the shade that I've got like all over my lips today. And then this has been my thing lately. I found a perfect deep red lip liner. Now let me rephrase that soft deep red. So we're not talking like vampy rich vampire red. It's not intense on that level and it's not as intense as like the fire engine bright reds, but it's just so perfect when you want to add a little red boost to any look. And it's the color called Gash from Urban Decay. So let me swatch this out for you here. I'm gonna swatch it kind of thick so you can really see the shade. See how there's richness to that, right? To most accurately describe this, I would say it's a bit of a mix of red and rust. and it's just so perfect when you want to add a little extra definition to any lip look or just fill in your entire lips with this. It's very creamy, very easy to put on. But today's color is kind of the fusion of these two shades. You know, that neutral dusty rose with a little bit of the red lip liner added in. And then I hope, those of y'all who tuned in for my video on the whole Too Faced Life's a Festival collection, and maybe you saw those first few products that I mentioned in that video were kind of like not really hitting the mark for me. But if you hunt in there with me and you stayed for the big lip color try on that I did, there were a couple of fantastic finds there with the angel tears. This stuff for as meh as some of the other things in that collection were for me, these were like gold. Got the angel tears lipstick. This is going to be like the ultimate little accent thing. I'm going to add a little bit more right here. Like it's a lipstick texture but it can act kind of in the way you may have used a lot of lip toppers. You see it right there, it's this light hint of pinky gold. And I have been loving to accentuate the center of my lower lip with that kind of thing, or I'll use the gloss. So the gloss is equally amazing. Out of everything in this whole line that came out, these were the most kind of pearlescent, beautiful accent type colors. So you can just dab a little on. Glosses are making a huge comeback in my makeup collection. So just depending on the texture of the look that I'm going for. I mean, I think you're going to get the most opaque intensity with the lipstick, but the gloss really provides an amazing pop as well. So these are just total stars, complete winners for me. Now this was taken straight from my purse. It's been living in my purse ever since, I don't know, probably the lip gloss renaissance video that I did. This Lancome gloss number 272. This one is very everyday. There's like a micro fine little goldeny shimmer in this. Maybe the best description is like warm rose or warm 
warmish, soft red, but it's a gorgeous shade. I tried it on in that video, but I've been wearing that a lot. It's been the purse go-to. This formula feels so nice, not overly sticky, um, not too thin. And these tiny shimmers in this gloss, you won't feel that texture whatsoever on your lips. It's not chunky, but it almost like exaggerates the shine that the gloss is already giving you, right? So it's absolutely beautiful. And then this last thing um, that I haven't yet shown you in any video, I'm gonna take off my lip color for this. This is from MAC and it's their Tender Talk Lip Balm in the shade called Play With Me. And this is a beautiful, fun, kind of soft reddish, although it has kind of a, like a soft reddish pinky look on my lips. That feels so fantastic and pillowy on my lips. Like we're talking a beautiful spring and summer soft red here. There is a little bit of like gloss-like shine that comes off of this, but guys, it's, it's the perfect thickness. Like it really does feel lip balmy. I think I have another one of these Tender Talk balms somewhere in my collection. And I remembered at the time, I thought someone told me they were getting discontinued or something, but they're on Ulta's website now. And this shade called Play With Me, I think is so fun. I think it looks great with the black and white striped shirt too. But the added bonus with this shade that I've loved is that as it wears a little bit, I do have this kind of like popsicle stain to the lips. Like not stain stain, not annoying like when will I ever get it off my lips stain, but just it, it leaves behind a little soft color that actually lasts surprisingly well for the fact that this has such a balmy texture. You guys, I feel like I could just talk for days on this stuff, but I hope you enjoyed this, um, this sort of roundup of my favorite products, most used products products. I think for now, me and my hair are going to go downstairs, have some breakfast. Got a fun week of videos ahead, so I will talk to you later. Bye!